We are recording. Okay. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the virtual meeting of the Newburyport Historical Commission for the 9th day of June 2022. Please note that this proceeding, like all these virtual meetings, is being recorded. Uh, the as per standard for the Zoom meetings, uh, only the commissioners will have audio enabled and we usually have a video enabled as well. Uh, and uh, we will enable, uh, we can audio enable a member of the public uh, to speak if there's a public hearing period, but uh, I'm gonna skip over the instructions for that right now because I don't think there's necessarily gonna be one, but if there is a public comment period tonight, I'll review the rules for that. And of course the representatives and the applicants or I should say the applicants and or the representatives uh, will obviously be able to speak during the appropriate times for their application. So let's start with a uh, call of the roll here to see who's present and accounted for and also we'll do an audio check in alphabetical order. Mr. Andrew Bernhardt. I'm here. Okay, thank you, Andrew. Uh, Malcolm Carnworth, did Malcolm join us? Uh, not yet, Chair, but I'll keep going. Okay. Um, Mark Sandrone, I don't see him either, right? Correct. I don't see him yet. Okay. Let's make a little note, note here. Uh, Mr. Christopher Fay. Um, uh, excuse me. I'm here. Okay. Joe Morgan. Here. Okay. And the Chair, Glenn Richards, is present and speaking. So that gives us four people, uh, which is the minimum required to have a legally binding meeting. Uh, four, in the, since there are only four of us here, uh, any votes that we might have to take <clears throat> will require unanimity because uh, the minimum required to uh, pass to or to uh, pass a motion is uh, four. So give me one second here. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, hopefully we can uh, leave it a reasonable time tonight. The first thing is the uh, preservation restriction review for 344 Merrimack Street. Uh, you might recall this from the previous two meetings. Uh, Mr. Nick Cracknell, I see him. Uh, Nick, you, we have you unmuted on our end, and um, so you can, uh, I'll let you speak in a second. Um, uh, so mm -hmm. Nick has busily been updating his uh, restoration, excuse me, the preservation restriction to incorporate uh, all the corrections we came up with last time. <clears throat> so uh, do you want, do you have any uh, comment, Nick, to make? Um, not unless you want me to summarize the changes, but I'll leave that to you. Um, I'm not sure. Well, but let me put it this way. Uh, does anyone on the panel feel that's necessary? I think there was just uh, there was one item that I had a question on. I think Joe Morgan may have also. Um, uh, Joe, what paragraph was that? Oh, there it is. Twenty. Was it twenty nine? Twenty nine. Yes. That's yeah. right. Twenty nine. Um, and uh, so we don't did notice that. Um, well, put it this way. Um, it, despite not being a member of the bar, <laughs> the way I interpret the language here is that um, <clears throat> the. Uh, the, the grantee, uh, the, okay, the, the grantor warrants that there's, there's no pr prior um, uh, liens or anything prior in right um, is the legal expression to this restriction other than the following, and then it lists, I believe, two mortgages. Um, there it's on the top of the next page. Um, can you, that's, yeah, that's the Fairway Independent Mortgage Corporation. Uh, Oh, okay. oh, and there it is to prime lending. Okay. So um, what we were proposing to do, uh, Nick, so that we could close this out and take a vote to uh, um, to approve it uh, is try to, um, to make a slight amendment if you and the applicant are agreeable uh, in tonight's meeting. Uh, now, Caitlin, would it be, can you, can you relatively quickly grab the, uh, the relevant language from um the 342 pr i, I can do that chair i have oh, you right can do it here. yeah because there are two items here the 342 if indeed we want to use that as a template uh their mortgagee was the institution for savings mm -hmm. and they offer in this uh, an exhibit um uh which uh which uh 
attests to subordination of the mortgage to this restriction. Um, and and with the institution for savings assent. So, and then there's the future condition, which is grantor agrees not to enter into or permit other mortgages, liens or leases affecting the property prior in right to this restriction. So right. there's two points there that are missing, I think, in, for 344. And I mean, I, 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 I don't feel like I'm qualified to state one way or the other whether this is required or not. I'm just stating that this is a template that we've used in the past. And it seems like it's adding more, uh, it's adding additional conditions and protection to the PR. And I don't, I'm not sure if they should be omitted from 344. Right. Uh, so uh, I, I, I'm, uh, the only glitch here I see, uh, that would prevent us from trying to resolve this tonight is that part I've kind of forgotten that part about the the um, uh, assent document from the institution for savings, you know, saying that uh, they grant that um, the PR will have uh, will be prior in right, um, which obviously you wouldn't have uh nick it would mean that um that those two mortgage companies there the fairway independent mortgage corporation and the um prime lending would need to uh provide that assent which obviously we can't do in the next few minutes at least to my knowledge so um any suggestions how to how to resolve this particular issue are you asking me uh yeah <laughs> i'm asking so you, i don't yeah, speak when you're I not know, looking I, for me to i speak. know you're not a real a real estate lawyer or anything uh Mr. Well, look, Kramer. because i'm not and maybe there's no one else on this call that is um why don't we i don't know any other reasonable way to proceed other there's two options here either we go ahead without it which seems like that's not anyone's preference there yeah. or we go ahead with it and you vote for it and I show up uh, next meeting to amend it if there's some problem with it that I don't know about. How's that? I don't know how else to. Yeah. Um, well, what we could do, what we could do along those lines is we could, let me see if I can phrase a motion here that would incorporate that. It would be to, um, instead of, usually the motion would be that we accept the revised uh, or the final revised I mean, uh, yep, uh, preservation restriction. Mm -hmm. But what we, what we would say is um, a subject to um, amendment. Um, to, what was, uh, can you go back one page so I can get the number of that clause 29. there? 29, subject to- uh, Board made the prior liens. Of clause 29, subordination of prior and right means yeah so 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 what we could do is if um i'll read that again and, and if someone cares to to um and if if well um uh, well before i act before i read that and ask for a motion let me see if any of my co-commissioners here have any comments on that anyone think that's a terrible idea or I, I think it's a terrible idea I, I think we came into this saying that we will definitely need to have an approved PR before we pass it on to the planning board you know, and I, I mean I hate to be um, an obstacle to this but I will not I will not uh, I, I will not vote for it and under any conditional uh, motion um, I think we need to have the completed language with the relevant okay. exhibits we need to have a complete PR uh, per the the template that we're used to, uh, I mean, if 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 there's legal if there's some legal uh, opinion other than just the people in our you know in our commission that uh, say this is okay, that's fine. I'm willing to go with that. But I we're working. We're, we only we only have the templates, the previous yeah. templates at our at our disposal here, and I think we have to um, we have to use them. And and if there's some reason why this language cannot be reproduced for 344 as it was in 342, then I think there's a problem and that we should get to the bottom of it. Okay. I, I have a question. I, I'm wondering, uh, was that prior uh, PR approved by any legal um, 
legal, legal opinion or was it just something that was drawn up? I think the prior right uh, uh, language, Andrew, is pretty much standard on the on the preservation restrictions because uh, it, it it I'm pretty sure it, I have it's familiar from from other PRs. I think it's pretty standard stuff. Um, and Joy, I, I totally understand where you're coming from. Um, my thought was that it would it would not go to the mayor or the or the city council without that clause. It would. Um, it would it would be the mo the motion would be saying that it the preservation restriction is okay except for that and we're not you know that I have to sign it as chair and I wouldn't I won't sign it until that's complete so that was the idea so that um, he could he meaning uh, in this case uh, Nick Cracknell and the applicant could say okay the um, the uh, Historical Commission has reviewed it, and they're okay with it, with the exception of the Clause 29, which we are working out. And uh, the, you know, once that we get that ironed out, then the, um, you know, then the, the chair is authorized to sign it, but not, not until. Um, if if that, if you're okay, comfortable enough with that, that's fine. But if, but again, we need a unanimous vote in favor. So if you're still edgy about it. Then, I don't see the hurry. I, I think okay. we ought to get it. We ought to get it uh, as we had um, originally predicated. I think we ought to get it uh, in the final form approved by the commission yeah. before we send it on down the line. Yeah. Well, um, the only hurry. Caitlin, can I bring up two points? Yep. Um, one is that this um, this is a draft form that will end up going to NHC for review and edit. So most likely, the final one will have some changes, and typically process wise, we've had the final PR once approved by MHC come back to you all. Um, you know, so you do see the final one. Um, there's usually changes. Um, and I will um, just note for the NHC that this um, project um, is special permit slated to go to, back to the planning board um, on Wednesday of next week. And I believe the planning board is looking for the NHC to um, to, I guess, approve the final form um, subject to MHC approval. That was the answer to the question, Joe, uh, what, about the hurry. It's not it's not our the hurry on our part. It's the hurry on the part of the applicant to try to have their ducks in a row for the uh, planning board meeting. Let them get them in a row. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, Okay, well, there's there's no point in um, in having a vote on that, and I, I totally understand that. Nick, why don't we do this? I'm uh, and this is something I'll cover later in my update from the chair. I'm working with another applicant on a preservation restriction that that that's been in the works for literally years. Um, that what we often do in these cases is work um, either like in a could be a subcommittee or it could be just just me or some other small subgroup of the historical commission will try to get as many you know get these little details ironed out to where we're ready to come back to the full commission for an up or down vote so um uh, i'd be happy to work with you to uh, you know to get that um uh number 29 there there you know corrected and, and all that good stuff and if if you want i could uh you know we could say well, the only thing I'd offer is that we could say to the planning board that, you know, this is in, in principle where, you know, this is okay, but we can't ap approve it because it's not that, you know, there was a flaw that needed to be corrected before we give it our, our official approval and that, that we're working on. So I'm sorry, we can't do better than that. We could offer that the scope that is an exhibit, the exhibit attached, the is we're in agreement on that. It's really just the legal lease that we has not been finalized and that has not been signed off yet. But the scope of work is uh, is fine. I think we've all agreed that that's fine. It's per the discussions that we've had at the site. Um, so in principle, the scope is good, but it's just the um, right. it's it's the legal lease that needs to right. be um, uh, you know quality check right okay would the would 
the historical commission, would you guys have any opposition to me uh, just sending a either depending on if I can show up or not? I don't know. I haven't looked at my calendar, but if I either showing up to to point out to the planning board or just send them a, a brief memo saying that basically what you just said, Joe, that that you know the scope of work that's been outlined, or you know the the, the PR is is basically fine in terms of the work that's been described and and all of that. But um, we were not able to get vote final approval because of the this legal problem with uh, number 29. Would, would that be okay with the commission? I'm see Chris nodding. Yeah, I have no objections. I have no objections to you doing that. Andrew, is that, I saw a gesture. I can't tell if it was a yay I'm, or nay. I have to unmute. Yeah, it's fine with nay. I okay. agree with that. Yeah. But Joe, is it acceptable to you? I'll go with that, but okay. it needs to be. It needs to be very clear that the PR yeah. has not been approved by the commission. Right. Right. Okay. All right. Um, um, that's fine. So, um, uh, so, so Nick, I'll, uh, you and I could, um, as far as when is the date of you, of that uh, planning board meeting? Next Wednesday. Let me look at the thing here. That would be the fifteenth. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. Okay. It looks like I already had it on my calendar for one thing or other. Maybe there was something else on there that I was interested in as well. Oh, probably. Well, I'm not sure what it was. Okay. Why do Why do I have the short term rentals? No. It's a couple. For some reason, I've got planning board meeting on my calendar for the fifteenth, the twenty second, <laughs> and the twenty second. I think the twenty second was a special meeting for the um, institution for savings thing, though. Okay. Well, anyway, not to prolong this any longer. The um, I'm sorry we couldn't get it finally uh, finalized uh, tonight. Um, um, but um, it again, I'll either. Um, do, you do you understand, uh, Nick? What we will do to help um, inform the planning board as to where our position is? Yeah, I guess I'll I'll ask Kate to to inform me as to whether that is going to be sufficient before we go and mobilize for Wednesday. It's not going to be see. worth it if they're not happy with that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, um, uh, Bonnie can weigh in on, you know, what specifically the planning board will want to see and if that will be sufficient or if they need something more. Correct. Yep. Okay. I think, uh, chair, um, yep. Rich, once I have your email, um, perhaps I can send that to the chair and vice chair of the planning board, um, and then we can talk about process and then get back to Nick um, with what they have to say. Yeah, okay. And we can do that. I will make a note uh, here to, to do that ASAP. Okay. Okay, very good. So we'll do that. Okay. Thank um, you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for coming, Nick. And sorry we couldn't uh, resolve that quickly, but we'll get it done. Okay. Thank you. Th and thank you for all your work on that. I know you did a lot. Okay. Uh, let's see. Do we have? We do have Haley McLean showing as an attendee. Uh, Haley, we have unmuted your audio, so I will just briefly. Uh, um, introduce this uh, demolition delay um, matter. Uh, this is not a formal public hearing at this point. Um, I know you've been, um, I mean, th this is my introduction actually for my fellow commissioners that uh, Haley McLean, uh, the applicant here for 30 Carter Street, whom you might recall for, from our last meeting, uh, has um, been doing some work with her architect and has actually submitted new plans, uh, which qualify under the dormer exemption rules that uh, she would be able to execute without requiring you know any special permits or uh, from the either either approval by the historical commission or other special permits so just so that so um it's it but other than that i'm not cl totally clear on what um ms uh, mclean's intentions are but if um why don't i turn the floor over to you haley if you can just tell us what it is you have in mind and what you want to do and what 
if anything you're looking for from the historical commission um okay hi guys um, hi hi um sorry i'm traveling for work again and i'm sitting outside on a balcony it's like it's like 1 30 so i'm sorry if i'm sounding like i'm whispering but I right, well, we can hear we can hear you fine and i understand you in bella okay. italia so you know what are you gonna yes. do <laughs> i know i'm here for a conference um but um Anyway, so I'm not sure, does, has everyone been able, at this point, I should assume everyone's been able to review these drawings or, okay, so they're up. Um, so what's happened is I knew this before going into the meeting, um, you know, prior with you guys uh, that we were able, we were able to execute on dormers without the historical review. However, um, like I said early on, I, I, I like to point out the obvious right away so we get it, you know, um, out in the open, but um, the, the reason I needed to go to the historical commission is because the dormer on the driveway side um, was pulled closer to the, to the side of the house than is typically allowed in, um, in the zoning. Um, it, I knew that if we did it this way, we'd be able to move forward without coming to the historical society. However, I, like I said, I wanted to, it, it becomes a more attractive and it's a more functional dormer if it is all the way to the, to the driveway. Um, uh, this also, unfortunately, going this way, uh, I can move the dormers closer to the street. I can get, I think, three, six off the street. Um, I'm not doing that. I'm, key, I'm holding it because like we said, we don't wanna see them. Um, we're trying to show good faith to the neighborhood as well. So, and there are some other examples that I would like to go through um, if we can uh, uh, of the street that the dormers are actually quite close to the street um, and very large. So we're not trying to do that. Um, I'm, I'm, held, I'm holding that same dimension off the street. However, um, this has forced us to increase the size of the dormer um, because before with the dimension of the dormer as it sits close to the street, I'm able to make more of a square with the staircase that's within that by pulling it off of the, off of the um, I'm sorry, off of the driveway side. Um, it now needs to become a longer elongated staircase. So we've actually increased the size of this dormer by two feet. Um, so today I'm really here just to show you that I can do this I, I, by right. Um, I, I'm, I will, unfortunately, I, I'm sorry that it's not exactly perfect for everyone, but I will move forward with it. Um, I guess what I'm here to do is ask you if you would consider reconsidering my original drawings, um, which allows me to uh, bring that dormer closer to the driveway side, but also br bring it two feet smaller. Mm -hmm. um, okay, and uh, just for the, everyone, uh, said, uh, could, sorry, I was gonna say for clarification, I, I, we're talking about the one that's shown here on the south elevation, all right? It's that sorry, one, and yes, you've yes. had to make it somewhat, uh, it's now 13 feet wide, it was a little, somewhat less than that, right? Yes, and unfortunately, it also changed the look of the windows, and now they look a little bit squat, kind of smushed yeah. in there, whereas um, there was a, a quite a bit more relief with the other dormer. Um, okay. I just think it looked nicer, but you guys also may okay. disagree. But anyway, so what I'm here really to do is just um, to say, it, please reconsider my yeah. other ones. Um, otherwise, this uh, is, is the plan that we are going to move forward with. And if if I do feel like there was some misrepresentation of the dormers on that street, um, I think it would have helped had people gone to the requested um, site visit. Um, I understand that everybody's busy, obviously, but uh, Google Maps always isn't a good, you know, um, follow up. So what I did is I actually went and photographed some of the dormers that are on the street for precedent study. Um, I think it is useful if we if we look at that. So this is the yeah, this is the house to my left. This is the balcony. Um, the first photo that Caitlin had up there was from the driveway side just to, to, to show you that you're not able to actually see the dormers at all um, from the face on. So the, the discrepancy of the asymmetry um, really isn't a, a, a super valid, um, not, not that's not valid, just it's not really that relevant because you're never going to be able to see them together. Um, so this is, this is uh, now we're on this house with the blue. Um, you can see that this is the house that's right next door to me. Um, if we keep scrolling down, um, you, you'll see that this is a massive dormer that I'm actually allowed to do as well. Um, and we could have done this. I chose not to. Um, and the actually, house that next doesn't to it, look like a compliant dormer because it comes right out to the plane of the outside I, wall. I, I look, if you keep going, you see that actually, I think it is held three six back. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's about three six back. 
Okay. Oh, well, but I'm, I'm not I saying that. It's, the, it, that. The, the measurement is from the plane of the wall below, not from the eave. So that could ah, be why. Okay. E either either way, it doesn't yeah. matter. I would never do this. This is. Yeah. The, I mean, just yeah. not. Oh, right, whatever. That's good. <laughs> we don't need to talk about these houses. We don't need to talk about these houses. I'm just showing you that these are here, um, yeah. and I could mine could come three feet six off the front of the house. I don't need to do that. It's, I don't right. need to create more space. I just want to live in this house comfortably. Um, and if we keep carrying on downward, um, you'll see that uh, that's so that's their view from the street coming up. I didn't bother going past my house. I just went from um, Merrimack Street up to the 30 Carter Street. And I didn't go for, further. Um, but if you keep, sorry, Caitlin, to direct you on this, but if you don't mind, keep going. That's just another weird thing that happened. Um, another dormer, it's a tiny one. Um, and then if all the way down to the last, I think the last image, one more, yeah, there. You can see that this, this is the view as you're coming, driving up on the right-hand side. Um, it, there's a house, right? So where that house is, you still won't even see the dormer as you're approaching um, my house. Obviously, as you carry on, you'll start to see it. Um, right. But I just wanted to show like that as that natural path as you're like you're from me far away, right. as you're driving up that street, you you don't really see it. So your house is the one with that where the arrow is pointing to the to the ridge, right? That's right. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so um, for the sake of time, would it be fair to to say that what you're what what you're asking of us tonight, or as is that um, for us to re to the, the the original proposal works out better for you in terms of uh, the interior space, the way that works out, and the certain aspects of the dormer in terms of the size work out, in your opinion better. Um, uh, however, if you cannot uh, execute that, you are able to execute this uh, revised plan that shows a dormer that is set back slightly from the, the wall below, but uh, as of, to accommodate the interior stairs had to be made wider because um, those stairs now needed to, you know, they couldn't have as many flights going you know, it's perpendicular to that south elevation wall. I had to go just a couple of steps and then a longer flight that's parallel yeah. to the south. In fact, you can see the dotted line there on that south elevation, um, kind of indicating right where those stairs would be. So anyway, so 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 the, am I fairly characterizing what you're asking? Would we reconsider uh, approving your original plan so you don't have to do this revised plan? Uh, that's that is exactly what I'm asking. Okay. Yes. Um, All right. Well, yeah. let me turn to um, my commissioners here. Um, I know I think you all here um, last time. Uh, uh, I know Chris. You typically are were were not a, a fan of the original design. Um, given this situation, any any thoughts about um, whether you would. Uh, find the original plan preferable to the by right plan? Um, I, it, no, I don't think so. I think if, if, if the city, if, if the dormers, the new proposed dormers are within the legal bounds, then I would say that would be your best option. Okay. All right. There's, I'm um, hearing a lot of different things that I don't particularly care for, but I'm going to save reserve, reserve comments on okay. that. So stand stand my ground on this one <laughs> okay and i think um andrew joe and myself were all voting in favor last time but it, but we need to we would need a unanimous vote because we need they need four affirmative votes Haley, to um approve a motion so there's um if you want we can call for a motion but it I, it sounds like it would not pass so it looks like your option is to go with the revised plan if you want to do that um Okay, sorry, I thought that this wasn't a like a voting. Sorry, so what are you voting on? Are you voting to to revote next well, week, or are you voting like right now on the drive? Well, um, what I'm what, what I'm saying is that there's no there there isn't any point in voting because uh, uh, Commissioner Fay has indicated that he would not vote in favor, and we need all four people present tonight to vote in favor for it to pass. So there's right, there's no, but is is. I guess what I'm, I guess earlier you said, how, how many people are on the actual commission? Well, 
The commission is authorized to have seven people. We have one chair vacant, so that's six, and two people are absent tonight. So there are only four commissioners present tonight, which is And the... I would need four of seven if they were Correct. to all be in attendance. Yeah. So wouldn't it be Well, regardless of how many are in, are in attendance, you always need a minimum of four affirmative votes to, to pass a motion. Right, but four of seven, not four of four. Is that no, correct? It's four regardless of how many people are there. There could okay. be four people here. There could be seven people here. You still need a minimum of four regardless. Right. So, but I'm, I guess what I'm saying, if, if there's, I understand oh, I that one person oh, is okay. a no, right. if, but there's only four people here. So if there right, are seven, right. I could right. potentially so, get another yes. Okay. Read, uh, reading between the lines here, it sounds, you know, and this, I, I've seen this before. If you want to, um, wait until we have a full quorum, full house, so to speak, with more voting members present and see if you can get an affirmative vote then, you're certainly welcome to do that. that that's totally up to you. And um, when would that, what, well, what, I, what, I, sorry, I, we, we vote, we meet twice a month. Uh, okay. the, the calendar is public, so you can, um, you're, you know, if, any meeting you'd like to come in and, and throw your hat in the ring, so to speak, uh, just contact the planning office. Caitlin, I'm sure you know how to c contact. Just let her know. Uh, how many days in advance, Caitlin, would she need to let you know before the meeting? Yep, um, we would need to know that she would want to be on the agenda um, probably about a week before. Yeah, about a week before. That's about what I thought. All right, so in other words, okay. uh, our next meeting is the 23rd. So, you know, a week from today would be about the deadline for, to let Caitlin know if you want to come back to me on the 23rd. Unfortunately, I have no way of knowing, you know, who, if you'll have six members present or not. We may, we okay. may, we may not. Okay, it's just kind of like whatever happens, happens that day. That's yeah. I mean, okay. we, we will we will have at least four, or we won't have a meeting because four is the we right. need to have four people to have a legal meeting. But so there'll be at least four, and right. perhaps as many as six. Um, we're uh, we're recruiting for a seventh member to fill a, a vacant seat at the moment. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Cool. I think. So, uh, ma'am, maybe this question isn't best directed to this team, but um, if I do get a permit pulled for this drawing, just so that we can start doing something, because this house has been sitting there since November, mm -hmm. um, uh, can I can I start and then come back, or do I have to do do I have to get like a pause before I present? Um, I. My understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, Caitlin, it would be my assumption that I know there's a lot of structural work and interior work that you want to do yeah. that wouldn't, that uh, isn't, wouldn't be affected by, you know, you wouldn't be changing the roof line. You wouldn't, you know, we're, we're, it, it was a roof line change that triggered the Historical Commission review in the first place. So if you want to start uh, on doing some of your restoration, uh, for example, if you were to remove vinyl siding and you know and repair clapboards and do that sort of thing, um, it's minus any any kind of normal repair or replacement in kind uh, that doesn't that's not considered to be deleterious to the historical value or anything. So in, in fact, we gen the commission generally looks favorably upon removal of vinyl siding. So if you want, you know, any of those kinds of things you could do, uh, the only thing uh, you would be prohibited from doing is like, you know, the, the demolition required on the exterior, you know, the roof, basically the roof line change with those, those exterior dormers. Yeah. That, that, you can you can't do that unless you're doing either the by right thing or you get mm -hmm. approval of your original plan one of those two okay that's that's great thank you no um it's more so just because we have so much structural work to do yes um, yeah I'd like to just get can't do yep. the dormers until that's all organized yep. anyway understood and caitlin was is that your understanding as well that i hopefully i didn't give uh Haley the wrong information there yeah that's my understanding uh by Haley, the best thing to do okay is with Jennifer Blanche and zoning administrator um, yep. for a recap of what happened here tonight um, and let her know what you um, would like to go forward and do. Okay. Okay. Sounds okay. good. 
Okay, get some sleep, Haley, and uh, th thanks for you know uh, <laughs> joining our meeting at what is a very uh, awkward hour for you locally. No, no, no. I'm just I'm just happy that you guys took me in, in again to look at this. So sorry, I yep. feel like I'm taking up a lot of your time. Not a problem. Okay, thank you guys. Okay, thank you, Haley. Okay, bye bye. Okay, board. Um, let me see. We need to approve the minutes from. The 526, um, hopefully I had a chance to review them. Um, is there a motion to approve those minutes? A motion to approve the minutes, this is Andrew. Okay. Thank you, Andrew, is that seconded? I'll second that, Chris. Okay, thank you, Chris. Okay. Can, uh, I, make, can I make one comment on the, on the minutes? Um, the- uh, Oh, yes. There was something that I, um, let's see if I can remember it. Um, oh yeah, I think it was, it was uh, Carter Street. Um, there was, it was unclear in the minutes. There was a three to two vote um, and, and it was worded such that the no's, um, it was that um, prevailed. But the problem was not the, the yes, the yay to nay, it was that there was an insufficient number of yays. So I mm -hmm. think that the, the, maybe the minutes should make that clear. Oh, okay. In other words, we're missing the four needed for a, a, a quorum. Okay, I know. Um, <clears throat> it was confusing. On the... It was confusing. Yeah, so the four required, uh, four required affirmative votes were not uh, secured. Gretchen, do you think that change could be um, Incorporated, a slight. Uh... Um, I'll think about if I would word it differently. It was kind of it failed because it was three to two. Well, it, yeah. no. Well, I think what Joe's point is the reason it failed wasn't because it was three to two so much as because it, there were only three affirmative votes and four are required. Mm-hmm. So in a way, I mean, I'm just, I think it just reflected, yeah, you know, I think about how to say it. Okay. All right. Do you understand well, what I, the, I just looked at it. I'm sorry to interrupt. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'd have, I'd have to agree, disagree with Joe. Like the motion did fail by a three to two vote. The, the assumption was, that mm -hmm. if another person was present, the motion would have succeeded is, is an assumption, I guess. It was three yays to two nays. Right. So the yeas would have carried it normally, but the failure was not the uh, was not uh, that there was a not a majority yay. It was because there was an insufficient number of yays. Well, it could have failed three to three or three to right. four. It still would right. have failed. Right. It's not everybody's vote. A number of people there. Yeah, I I see what Chris is saying. Everybody's vote is noted, and and the motion. I mean, did literally fail by a three to two vote. So I, I don't know. I thought it was three yays to two nays. Right. And why, so why did it fail? Because, because you need four affirmative votes. Yes, but that's not mentioned in the um, uh, that's not mentioned in the meeting. Yeah, yeah but the that's the assumption that if there are more people there, somebody else would have voted yes, and then it would have approved, uh, passed. But. Yeah. It's well, I don't, I don't think it, I need, think it needs to be spelled out. My point is it yep. needs to be clarified. It needs to be it needs to be clear. It's not yeah. it's not obvious from the notes, and I think you need an additional statement to clarify. It. Thank you. Okay. okay, and and just just so we're clear on this assumption business, no one's assuming that any additional members would have changed the number of affirmative votes. That's I don't think Joe is suggesting that at all. You know, uh, I didn't, Joe, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm not hearing you say that, oh, if there was um, more votes, you know, it, it would or might have passed. That's not what he's saying. He's just saying that the, the rule is that you need four affirmative votes and it didn't get four affirmative That's votes. That's right. And you can't interpret that okay. from the notes. And I think that the but clarification had, would help. We've had other motions that have failed by like one to five or you right. know, zero to six, and it's Mention, not. Are problem. you object? Are you objecting on principle? No, what I, are you I guess objecting maybe to? In front, I'm saying I'm that we don't. I'm wondering what you're objecting to. 
we don't spell that out in other motions when some there are other motions that fail unanimously and if it's zero it failed like zero to seven you don't say it failed zero to seven because four affirmative votes were needed it's it was just an accurate reflection of what happened at the meeting i think anyone though that is a layperson re reading it would not understand it I think it needs to clar be clarified that there was an And we'd have to clarify number. it for every vote where it fails. Sure, that's fine. Absolutely. Please do. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Okay, um, okay. I guess, you know, uh, I get, my sense is that some of us feel it sort of redundant in that it is spelled out in the ordinance what the requirement is and and it's the same for every vote we take so it wouldn't but, seem but i'm saying know. a lay person coming to the minutes someone in the community will not understand they will not understand why a majority yay vote fails i'm just asking oh, for see. clarification it's, it's a very simple point but, you know I well, understand. I don't make the decisions. I was just explaining how I wrote it as what has what actually happened. I'm just you're the boss. You tell me what you want it to say. Yeah. And then um, I have to put that in how you right. tell me to do it because I'm the employee. Yeah. I think okay. what you could do, you could have an, there's another option here, where is that you could preamble all min, meeting minutes saying that a major, a minimum of four votes are required. A quorum is four any time that there is a, a, an insufficient quorum vote that the emotion will fail i think you could actually just do that as kind of a, a general uh note at the beginning just reminding everyone in the meeting minutes whoever were to read the many meeting minutes that that's sort of the rules that we're playing by but to to not have that mentioned anywhere and then to see three yeas and two no's and the motion fails that just confuses people and you know, not us, we we do this, we're doing this, but for people who are coming to the minute, meeting minutes as a record of the of the uh, procedures, they wanna, they don't know that. So they might ask that question. Am I not right? Yeah, well, I see what you mean. And, and it, this used to be, there was a big, one of the reasons I had the, went through all the trouble of putting that, spelling that out in the ordinance was because there was a case um, where one of the attorneys for an applicant was arguing that um, a three, we had a short, uh, there weren't, it was, it was a case like this. There were, I think there were like five or six people there. It was like a three to two vote. And I was saying, you know, it fails because the way I read the audience is that you need four, but then the attorney was saying, no, it's a, it reverts to a majority and they were making a whole big stink about it. So uh, we actually had it change the wording of the ordinance to make it very, very clear. At any rate, um, so it, it may be, uh, you know, Maybe the simplest thing, Gretchen, Joe, how, right now I'm, I opened up the minutes that says the motion failed by three to two vote. Maybe we should say failed with a three to two vote. Um, uh, well, is that going to help you at all? Or do you think that's sufficient? Uh, Why would a three to two vote fail if there were three yeas and two nays? How does that happen? <laughs> I'm just asking the question. How does it well, happen? Well, as well, you be? know how you know how it happens because you need four, right? Um, so yeah, exactly. Yeah. So write that into the minutes. That's all I'm asking. Okay. Okay. And by the way, it for people who are not familiar with the rules. Okay. Uh, no hang on a second. I mean, and... a, I mean, if if you want me to do it, I'll do it. Okay. If you, if, the, if the question is that it's too difficult, I will do it, and and send it back to you. Gretchen, is that okay? Would you like me to do it? No. Okay. Uh, I'm, what I'm thinking is, Gretchen, well, two things. First of all, right before that sentence, um, Andrew Bernhardt's name is misspelled. You've got, it's correct in the vote, B-E-R-N, uh -huh. but in the sentence before you have B-A-R-N. Um, Sorry. It's okay. Uh, why, don't, why don't we insert in parentheses, after you've got, you already have a parenthetical remark with the vo actual votes. Can we simply insert a, uh, another par parenthetical remark saying, uh, simply saying four 
affirmative votes uh, are required to carry a motion or just are required, period. And I think that will, um, it could either be at the end of the sentence or it could be um, right after the word vote where it says the motion failed by a 3-2 vote. Um, could be there, I'll, whichever we think is grammatically better. So um, is there a motion to approve the minutes as just amended? I move to approve the minutes as amended. Okay, thank you, Joe. Um, uh, is second there a second? It, Andrew. Andrew second. Okay, thank you, Andrew. Okay, um, Andrew, your vote? Uh, yes. Okay, thanks. Chris Fay? Yes. Okay, thanks. Joe Morgan? Yes. Okay, and the chair is also in favor. Uh, so we have a unanimous vote on it. Um, uh, <laughs> The, the only updates from the chair, I'll be very brief. Uh, again, I'm a reminder, if you can think of anyone you think might be interested in joining this uh, August assemblage, uh, please encourage them to, to, you know, either, you know, talk to me or, or contact the mayor's office directly. The, the procedures the mayor has to, you know, nominate them and so on. You've all been through that. And secondly, um, uh, some of you were around for some of the discussions on the preservation restriction for the old jail. It's It's been totally rewritten and cleaned up and is almost uh, getting very close to ready for prime time. I'm, I'm working with them on it. There's, I've got a couple of questions to try to make sure that when we bring it to this body, it will be, um, uh, it will be acceptable uh, for everybody and we avoid some of the kinds of issues. Uh, we, we have with these things. So just just a, an FYI on that. Chair so any Richards, other, yes? Yes, I'd like to make one more um, comment. I, I hear your appeal to find uh, another member for our commission. I would also suggest that the, the members that we have actually attend the meetings. I mean, I think that uh, it's hard to, it's hard to really yeah. uh, get you know to really advertise for a seventh member or or certainly or an eighth or a ninth which should be we should have also as, as standbys but i mean if our regular membership doesn't show up if we only have barely a quorum at these meetings that's not good we should have we should have um all of our members showing up uh except if there's a really you know valid excuse i don't know i mean certainly summertime is going to be difficult for everyone but I feel I think people should make a real effort, um, and because that will change, um, that will change the, the votes in some cases. Yeah, I well, you won't get any disagreement from me on that, uh, Joe. I I, you know, put it on my calendar, and keep that time very, you know, kind of sacrosanct. Well, of course, I have to run the meeting, so there's additional motivation there, but. Um, so tonight, for example, I could be sailboat racing with my friend, but uh, but I'm here, you know. But next week I'll be racing. It's every day. He, it happens to be Thursday night that he races. Although I'm not too sorry. I might be if I'm missing out on any down unexpected downpours. At any rate, I digress. But you're absolutely right, Joe, and I second your 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 thoughts on that. And does um, he have Wi-Fi on his boat? <laughs> well, he might, he might, he might not want me trying to conduct a meeting during a race. He, he, he generally, in fact, um, it's a, it's rather funny. This guy, his personality changes from Captain Bly to Mr. Mellow as soon as we cross the finish line. He's driven, driving, driving, you know, right, you know, go as fast as he can. As soon as we cross the finish line, hey, let's pop a beer. <laughs> anyway, I digress. I know everyone likes to end these meetings at a reasonable time. So along those lines, the chair would be happy to hear a motion to adjourn. Um, motion to adjourn, Andrew. Okay, Andrew, is there a second? Uh, second that, I'm Chris, this is Chris, sorry. Yep, yep. recognize Bye. your voice, Chris, thank you. Okay, it's been seconded is, okay, Andrew, your vote? Yes. Almost seems silly enough to have to do a roll call on this. Uh, Chris? Yes. Okay, Joe Morgan? Yes. 
gee, if I vote no, that means we're being, we can't adjourn. <laughs> but fortunately for you guys, I do not vote no, and we can officially adjourn. So thanks very much. Thank you, everybody. For those of you who have attended, you. you have my un, undying appreciation for your attendance and your attention to these matters. So thank you for showing up. And I, I, will, I will speak to our wayward members. Uh, I know I know Marks and Jones got a lot of stuff going on. I'm, I'm not sure what's going on with with Malcolm, but we'll work on them. All right, thanks everybody, and have good a good night. night. Take care. Okay, good night, everyone. Bye. Thank good you. Night. Good night. Good night. Good night.